So take a few moments to settle into your practice. There's so many ways to meditate. There's so many ways to enter into this realm of discernment, introspective, investigative discernment. And so many meditations don't even bother with that. They just say, chill. But for me, it's like, chill so that you can have a presence, presence of awareness to be able to observe reality, observe beingness, observe existence, observe your ideas and notions about how things are. This is it. This is the act. And what's wonderful about the act of meditation as a process of observing is that at some point we realize we can't actually escape that practice. That the continuity while you're sitting, of being a watcher, being a witness, being observant, in fact, is what's happening all the time. because we've got movement and conversation and whatnot happening in the other times, we lose sight that observing is always happening. So when we come into a dedicated meditation time and we're given the instruction to watch our breath or to watch our thoughts, watch ourself, watch the watcher, It almost feels like we have to do something. We have to do the watching. And so we, we go, I don't know, how do I do that? But rather than think about how to watch, how to observe, observe your thoughts, you can just sort of come to understand, oh, this is observing. What you're doing right now is observing. For the most part, you're observing through your ears, you're listening. But there's something listening to the listening. There's something seeing what the eyes are seeing. There's something perceiving what is perceived. As we come into recognition that observing is sort of an inescapable pattern of our life. You might find that there's this wonderful feeling of, wow, I, I'm, I'm taken care of. I can't escape this ability to be here. I can't screw this up. I'm good at being awake. I'm good at being a, an enlightened person. I never thought of it that way. I never considered myself an enlightened person. But in fact, I am the thing that's been shining the light on all the things the whole time. I'm the enlightener. It is my natural disposition to illumine whatever it is I'm observing. I'm the light that brings recognition. I'm staring at this Zoom screen say, oh, it's the pixels on the screen that's lighting it up. Mm -hmm. It is your sight 
that is lighting it up. They all oh, your words, Richard, they're bringing attention in my mind to this subject matter. Mm -hmm. It is the light of your consciousness that is bringing attention to these words. You are the inescapable reality of awakening. Without you, the show can't happen. And so this sitting practice is about coming into a communion with that knowledge, an understanding with that knowledge. So you can't get really good at this. You also can't be bad at it. You can't not be it. Now, those who have a stake in the game, they have an agenda of <laughs> climbing the social hierarchy of experienced meditator, blah, 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 blah. Maybe they can get good at watching their thoughts. They can get good at watching their breath. Okay. But you are by default a watcher. And I invite you to not play that game of climbing up the ladder of how good am I at watching my thoughts? How good am I at watching my breath? Because at the end of the day, there is still the application of transcendence. Because how good am I at watching the tennis ball? How good am I at playing pinochle. I don't even know how to play pinochle. How good am I at my craft, you see? All that's watching as well. It's worldly. Even watching your breath, watching your thoughts on some circumstance when we're thinking about how good am I at doing it as though I could progress. It's worldly, it's temporary, it is not transcendent. And you hear people who have gotten very good at watching the basketball while dribbling it. You've heard some of the masters of the, their sports, they talk about this transcendent moment because they got good at it. This, this work says you don't have to get good at it. Mm -mm. You just have to realize you're always watching. You're always lighting up this show. You can see that you are the continuity between all things. Then when my words go away and there's a moment of silence, you might not need to go looking for the next thing to pay attention to. You might not need to go looking for your breath. You might not need to go looking for some thought bubble. some body sensation, because you're just hopping from one object that you are watching to another. You're watching my words in your mind, paying attention to it. 
And then I stop talking and you go looking at something. And all we're inviting ourselves to look at right now is an understanding that in order to stop listening to my words and to start listening or watching something else, you still must be there watching. Keep taking a few more moments at that. As the object of your observation fades, something else appears there. But the act of observing does not disappear. It's the objects you observe, whether it's my words, some thought in your mind, etc. As your mind brings in new objects, stories in your head, sensations in your body, cognizing my words as meaning, whatever. Concentrate. On perceiving that the observer is there throughout, unchanged. Unchanged. But you can observe my words, you can observe your thoughts, you can observe your body sensations. The observer is unchanged. So there's a very little amount of instruction tonight. Because you are seeking to know something for yourself. It should be obvious to your experience. It should be apparent. Oh yeah. I can't stop watching.
have you ever been watching a show, a really good show, or you're listening to a song, you're enjoying the song, and somebody else, whether you're in the car and you're listening to the radio or you're at home and you're watching a show and someone comes into the living room and they, without you realizing, they abruptly change the channel. Or you're listening to the song and they change the song right while you're in the middle of listening, right while you're in the middle of watching. You know that feeling? It's uncomfortable for a moment. I was, couldn't stop watching. I was fascinated. I was captured. And then the object that you were listening to, the object that you were watching, gets taken away. And put that back, put that back. Because it felt good to be a pure watcher, a pure listener. Because of our personality, disposition, whatever, that song or that show could really, really capture us into pure listening, pure watching. And non-duality is like that. What you're going to try to know is that the channel can never be changed. The radio cannot be turned off. You're always watching. You're always listening. Try not to get attached to the particular station that you're tuned into. That's what this next little moments of silence are about. Not the show that was so captivating. It was the feeling of being a pure watcher. That's what we really enjoyed. In Vedanta and yoga, they talk about varagya, dispassion, 
or detachment. This quality can help you become a pure watcher because you don't necessarily care so much about what the particular thing is that you're watching. What you care about is the feeling of just being there with something. And so you try it here. We don't need to be attached to focusing on our breath, looking beyond our thoughts. Just enjoy being a watcher. As thoughts pass through, then the station changes. I say some more words, then the station changes. You pay attention to the body, the station changes. But you're always watching, listening. Unchanged. So you cultivate a kind of an aloof translation, but dispassion or detachment for what you're watching. Yet you can appreciate whatever's on the channel. These words, your thoughts, your emotion, your body, whatever arises, you can appreciate it. But as it fades away and the next thing fades in, it's the pure act of watching. That holds our love, holds our attentiveness. Everything else is just visiting for a little while. don't need to cling to any object or circumstance. You need to move your knees, shuffle about for a moment, just let it happen. Just clicking through the channels for a few moments. Tuning the radio. You're still listening. Remember those old radios where you'd have to dial it in and find the station? You're actually listening quite a bit during those moments until a, the frequency gets focused and you can hear the song clearly. 
You hear all that static. <laughs> You're listening. You're watching. No particular song. But the act of listening to the static, the act of hearing that song tune into frequency, listening to the song itself. It's all the same to the listener. The listener who has understood. That's what's most important, most valuable, most dear to one's heart is the listener itself. This creates a deep affection for life. So this passion and detachment can be a little misleading. Because what you get in exchange is a deep affection and appreciation for all of life. Maybe you're not there yet. Maybe you are. The first step is to realize the watcher is continuous. It is not interrupted or disturbed as the objects that it watches continues to change. Even if you just sit here for the entire practice with racing, racing, racing thoughts, one after the other, you have made tremendous strides in this simple understanding. You have gained more than the one who is upset with themselves that they could not watch their breath <laughs> or they could not quiet their mind because you have at least transcended the idea of needing to achieve something. You do not need to achieve a quiet mind, a peaceful heart. They are the boons, they are the gifts of one who recognizes themselves, the unchanging watcher.
seamlessly staying present, seamlessly allowing for the station to change, the channel to change. I witness, I observe. When we focus on what we're observing, then we say, I like it or I dislike it. But instead we cultivate a love for observing in and of itself. It is not to be taken for granted, even though it's always there. is a source of guidance, inspiration, and wisdom. But you must return to it. It's not going to chase you down. You must acknowledge, oh, the light of consciousness, the light of being, the light of me is always shining on whatever it is I observe. I know, as people, we love things that are rare and precious. So how do we cultivate this love and appreciation for something so mundane, something so readily available? It is extremely rare and precious to be one who knows this. All the peace and contentment we seek through goals and dreams can be found by knowing I am the light of consciousness. Be one of the rare and precious few to make this understanding. I am the light of consciousness. Even the light of the sun needs the light of my consciousness to be known.
see if these words can reverberate as true for you. I am the light of consciousness. Oh, boastful. Are you bragging? No. Do you comprehend the simple meaning? I am the light of consciousness. It's humbling. How silly I've been. All the explanations I've tried to come up with all this time. See if that phrase can reflect in your mind. If you can observe the continuous stream of observing, of watching. I am the light of consciousness. the last few moments. See if the realization can arise that by being the watcher that does not stop watching, it's not mundane, it's not status quo, it's not average. It's miraculous, it's magnificent, it's wonderment, it's divine. Sacred.
magical. The existence of observation, pure light of awareness, marvelous. See if you feel that, if you understand it. Relax. Adjust your experience. You can sign off from the call if you'd like to stay in your practice. Or I'll pause the recording and we'll do questions. <laughs> 